Hello everybody, it's Cindy Cashmere at C2C Gallery at home. And uh, my daughter's always reminding me to remind people that we're at home. Christy Dries is with us tonight at her house. Leanne Frame is at her house. And both of these gals are local West Michigan artists. They both have studios in their home, um, like I do. And um, they're both full-time artists. They live off their craft and um, they just keep working it. So tonight what we're gonna do is, just like every first Friday when we used to be in the gallery, we try to have a conversation that's easy going. Um, you know, we make mistakes, we flub it, we don't practice, we just do this. And hopefully you enjoy it too. Um, the goal is, is that we'll keep doing this every month, just like we used to. We're gonna make it available for like all day Friday and after that. Um, so you can watch it when it's comfortable and easy for you. So with that, um, Christy, why don't you pipe up and say hi, just because maybe somebody doesn't know you. Hello, Christy Dries here. <laughs> and then Leanne, why don't you pipe up and do the same thing? Hi, Leanne here. Cheers. <laughs> yes, oh, and that's the one thing. Okay, so other first Fridays, um, <laughs> I would never ever have a glass of wine because I was all business and I had to balance at the end of the night. So for this, I get to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, tonight I was trying to think of a few things because Leanne's been with us, Christy's been with us for years and I thought, well, you know, what might people be wondering about or what can we talk about? So I wanted to change up the questions just a little bit. And it was funny, I was thinking, um, like I was, some of the questions I thought of were questions that I thought back and I was like, I can't remember. I can remember when I took one of my kids to their first concert or their first movie. So I'm really curious to see what you guys come up with. So first question is, is what was the first live concert you ever went to, uh, Leanne? And did your parents know about you going? Did you um, love it? Did you, were you overwhelmed? Were you underwhelmed? Did they become your favorite group? Tell us a little bit about the first live concert you ever went to. You know that what they say about if you can remember it? <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't know if I remember the first live concert I went to, but I do remember um, seeing The Who in oh. Detroit. Um, and that was, that was, that was an event to remember. Um, but I've seen so many actually now as an older adult than I did when I was younger. Um, when I saw The Who, I was actually, um, an, a young adult at that point in time. So, yeah, The okay. Who. <laughs> All right. I can't, I can't remember my first live concert. Christy, what was the first R-rated movie you ever saw? I was thinking about that earlier and I thought, and I'm not sure if this was the first one, but I think my mom took, she probably dragged us along, but I think it was War of the Roses. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I probably was 15 or 16 or something like that, because I just looked at the date of it, but I do remember going to the Grand, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. Uh, it's interesting, yeah. I have the movie here. <laughs> it's a good laugh. So, you know, it's funny. Um, I don't remember the first R movie I ever saw, but I remember the first R movie that I let my middle child go see, and I took him to it. We were on vacation, and Camille was a baby, so she stayed with the grandparents. I took the boys to go see, and I had no idea what I was taking them to, but I think they had a sneaking suspicion. Okay. I, they let, talked me into taking them to What About Mary? Oh, <laughs> yes. And, oh my gosh, I was like this. I was horrified. <laughs> I can remember a few of those scenes. <laughs> yes, yes, I was, I was mortified, and I think they were too, and they didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so both of you, just separately, who's your favorite musician today? 
I don't know if I have a favorite musician, but I will tell you that usually in the afternoon I'll put Pandora on. It's usually Margaritaville. So I usually have Jimmy Buffett on or you know, some sort of new country music. So, but the go to is always Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> I take myself to the lake. <laughs> so I like class, classic rock too. And um, sometimes I listen to jazz, but I don't really know all my musicians or artists. Yeah. Leanne, I'll run from classical music, um, mostly strings, and to um, Little Mart, is it Martini? Um, mm -hmm. a, a favorite is Hang On, Little Tomato, something like that. Um, I like French jazz, oh. French or Cuban jazz. That seems to be yeah. a favorite area of mine lately. Um, is it Chris um, Smithers? Mm -hmm. um, is a good one. Um, so I like more eclectic, more independent um, musicians, um, easygoing. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, there's some oldies that are favorites, but to, as far as today, it's more of a jazz kind of a scene for me. Yeah, I like Bob James a lot. Yeah. Um, I find when I'm in my studio, if I'm trying to figure something out, I need to have classical music. Mm -hmm. And if I'm trimming pots, I can have anything. I can, you know, do rock, I can do blues, I can do, you know. Um, and if I'm glazing pots, it needs to be something that I'm not getting distracted because otherwise I'll put the wrong glaze on. Right, right. Yeah, I like the, the theme music for the Thin Red Line. It's so emotional. I know that movie is very difficult, but the theme music for a Thin Red Line is just earth-shaking, moving emotions. Oh, yeah. All right, so, oh, what's your favorite body of water? Clean. As long as it's clean. <laughs> Salt water, salt water, or um, or unsalted fresh. or fresh. Um, well, swimming in Spain, I felt the Mediterranean was very soothing and almost like a massage for your body, therapeutic mm. for the body. It was cold, but it was just so different than any other water I've swam in. But the Caribbean, for all the sea life, of course, for snorkeling or diving. But Lake Michigan's right here. It's the best water we have. It's whatever you have, you know, the closest water you can get into for me and clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I would say uh, obviously Lake Michigan is my go to place. Um, but I do love the ocean anywhere there, where there's a beach <laughs> in warm weather, palm trees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. All right, so let's talk about art. So right now, do you have an, a theme or an influence that you're kind of focusing on that you're using as a direction? I think we're pretty similar um, as far as nature. Um, a lot of my themes are, include water, water, woods, nature, um, it's where I find inspiration. So, yeah. Sometimes it's an interior just because it's a particular mood that seems to strike me. So. Yeah. Christy? Yeah. Um, let's see here. Usually it's, yeah, the woods or um, somewhere where it's calm and soothing. So it's the lake or the beach. Um, that's always my go-to. But then, of course, I get kind of bored sometimes and switch gears and we'll do my flower theme from my grandmother's garden. So um, that's kind of next on the next series, I think, do another inspiration from the garden. Um, so yeah, I'd say mostly nature, pretty much. So um, I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball. Um, I have heard from several artist friends that in the last 60 days, they thought, oh good, I can be in my studio, I can focus, I can try some things that I haven't been able to try. But then when push came to shove, 
they actually had a hard time even stepping into their studios. Okay. Did either of you, how did you handle the last 60 days? Um, you know, I've, I've worked around here and I've done some flower theme and some oil, so I've been able to work, but I've also kind of switched gears for a while too, where I'm working and trying to uh, uh, keep the website up and running better. And um, I've been working on that a lot. And I'm doing more learning of the video stuff for mm -hmm. online classes and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of working in circles a little bit. So I haven't probably worked on painting in probably a good maybe two weeks. Um, but um, I have an easel to finish, or a, a painting to finish on the easel. So I'll get back to it. But I kind of work in circles, and it just kind of depends on where the day takes me. So. Okay. The end? I ran to the studio, and I hid, and I was so happy. <laughs> so happy. It, it, you know, if someone said this is the way you have to live for a year or two, okay, I'm in. I am so in. Right. I was able to really focus on just being in the studio and I knew that all my normal moving parts that I have in my life are quieted so it was mine so the back of my head wasn't didn't have any thing that was making noise it was just total focus in the studio I absolutely loved it I mm -hmm. it was like something I would prayed for for years and I didn't want a pandemic to bring it mm -hmm. but I took it I took advantage of the time and I really worked hard so very pleased. I mean, hey, I could, yeah, I, um, yeah, I could live this way. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it's nice. It is nice. Yeah. The, the kids, I'm like, wow, I don't have a sport to go to at all. <laughs> yeah. And I was able to experiment more because I knew I had a space of time. So I was able to push the boundaries or work a plate harder than I would normally. And I was willing to say, you know, like I'd look at a plate and I'd say, uh, or the image thinking it could be pushed this and I'm thinking why not do it just do it so it was good it's been wonderful oh good, okay. good. Um, so both of you um, have pretty much really stayed focused with the art world really truly since coming out of college you know Leanne I know your path wandered just a little bit but then when you did go to college for art you have been entirely focused on it. And Christy, you have also. Yes. So if you could do something differently, do you have a cat jumping around on you? I have a cat. She wants to be in my way. <laughs> That's a big cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you could have done it differently, is there anything that you would have to set yourself up to either be where you are today, maybe sooner, or maybe you believe it would propel you further down your path? Hmm. I don't think I would have done anything differently. Um, I already knew that it was gonna be a long haul to get where I needed to be. So um, I just started plugging away at it. So I, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Um, I painted out of college and uh, all my life. And of course I did the custom framing business. Um, I think that was a wise choice to do. So, um, no, but this is what I love to do, and I, I can't imagine doing anything else. Okay, and so for some people who don't realize this, Christy had her own gallery for 10 years, and it was in Spring Lake, and it was a framing business along with representing other artists and her artwork. And oh, probably eight years ago, thereabout, she closed the gallery. And that's how C2C Gallery started representing her paintings. And then Leanne, um, and then I'll let Leanne talk, but Leanne started with, I think, this is my belief, that she was a hairdresser first so that she could have some income to help pay for her to go to college. Yep. And then once she was in college, then she was focused. And when she got out of college, um, at some point you did go on and get your MFA, which allows you to teach at the college level. So that also then helps with the income and allows you to have your studio with all your tools. So go ahead and go from there. What can I add? No. <laughs> yeah, I um, always wanted to be an artist. I knew that, that wasn't even a question. Um, in what creative manner um, was it gonna take on? And I knew 
well, early on that would be drawing, painting. I didn't know printmaking until undergrad, but um, yes, I got my hairdressing um, license. I started that while I was in high school, so I came straight out of high school nearly into the salon, worked, and I had a good clientele, was able to work part-time and pay my way through Kendall for three years. But, you know, there are a few exits over the years, um, but there's always an on-ramp if you stay true. And um, so I was able to do that and um, keep a house, a family, a job, uh, two sons, and um, get my MFA, like you said. And the day that I had um, rehearsal for graduation, I came up to Muskegon and knew that there may be an opening, did a short interview, and I was hired on the spot. Oh, that was exciting. <laughs> that was like, wow, this works. So I jumped right from one to the other. I was still at Kendall teaching for a couple of more years, but um, stayed at Muskegon as adjunct. And that does allow me to be at home in my studio, and it does provide an income, and it does give contact with other artists and sharing everything that I can with young people so that it enriches their life, even if they're not going into the arts, but it will make their life better just to have that education. So that's an exciting part. And so that really makes you realize as an artist how important the arts are. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm here and it's good. I don't know what our fall will bring with the college though. That's another, another so, issue. What is, do you have a favorite artist in your medium? Leanne? I have several. It seems there's several. There's Blanche Lazelle, who is a white line woodcut artist who came over here and started a new style of um, printmaking. Um, of course, Mary Cassatt had made some innovations in printmaking. Um, Charles Bartlett, who was born in the 1800s in England, but ended up in Hawaii, does some beautiful, beautiful work. Um, Martin Lewis, um, Gustav Bauman, he's also another um, um, woodblock printmaker. Kate Colowitz, Elizabeth um, Claire Layton. So there's a lot of artists, and I look at their works for, for inspiration and um, if I'm stuck and not how on how to resolve a work, I'll start looking at other artists' works. But a few favorites are Charles Bartlett, um, Kat Colwitz, Mary Cassatt. Um, yeah. Okay. Christy? Uh, good question. <laughs> of course, we always gravitate to any of the impressionistic artists. Um, but then I think locally, um, I'm always inspired. I love to see Deb Bowen's artwork, her abstracts. I'm always inspired by her colors and design. Um, let's see here. What's going on with my computer? There we go. Um, I follow a few artists on Instagram. There's a Claire DeJarin, and I've seen Rachel Van Dyke. I think her, her work is kind of landscape and colorful. And then I like Bob Burge. His, I, I watch a lot of his demos and workshops, and I, I love his work too. So I don't know if I have anything, anybody in particular. I, I kind of bounce around, and I'm, I'm gravitating obviously towards those artists that have a lot of color in their work. Okay. Um, what's your favorite tool to create your artwork? Christy. Okay. I forget what the name of it is, darn it, and I was going to grab it, but... It's got this little rubber tip at the end of it. And Leanne, do you know what it is? <laughs> yeah, we use it. We use it in um, ceramics. Um, that's right. <laughs> Cindy, you might know. It's not a scribe. It's not a scrib. What is that called? It's got that, it's a beveled little rubber yep. <laughs> copper. Yep, we use it for cleanup. Yeah. yeah. What's that called? <laughs> that rubber tip thing. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I love it for signing my name in the oil or screw oh. my mind through. It's, it's great. I love it. Oh, yeah. Never thought of that. I took a workshop and um, she used it in this workshop. I thought, oh, I really love this tool. So, yeah. Huh. Ceramics and oils. Same tool. I know. <laughs> yeah, so here's a little known fact. You guys probably know this, though. So, if you take a blue 
I believe an oil paint, I think, doesn't it have real cobalt in it? Some and do. You, and you could use it then to enhance a glaze if you need more Ooh. blue. Ah. So anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. let's see here. So we talked a little bit about education. Um, I've taken lots of workshops. And Christy, I don't know if you've taken a lot of workshops, but is there one class or workshop that you feel just made you leap forward? Hmm. No, I haven't taken a lot of workshops, unfortunately. Um, I took a workshop by Dreama a couple years back, and I loved it. It was a couple day workshop. Um, but where did I? I think my turning point was, for some reason, I decided to paint my canvas black um, for abstracts. And, and I liked how it looked with the abstract work. And I thought, I wonder what would happen if I put this on a canvas and you know, use it with my oils. So I was always kind of like, there's something missing in these oils. I just didn't like it. It was just a like, whole oh, hum. So that was kind of my turning point when I started doing the oils on top of the black acrylic. But I mean, I went. I went to college and I have a Bachelor of Art degree and I emphasize in painting. But um, other than that, you know, I may, you know, I might look online for demos or workshops and that kind of stuff. But um, probably the painting on black would be my turning point really for the oils. Okay. Leanne? Um, yeah, I've taken a few workshops. I think I grow with every workshop and it's not always the workshop itself. It's the people that I meet or the places that they are. Um, Ireland, Spain, and out in Massachusetts from ZMA's printmaking. Um, just gathering so much knowledge. But I did work with uh, John Clemens, who was uh, passed on, and he was a master printmaker. And I would go to his studio in Shelbyville. I met him at Kendall. He taught one semester, but we became the best of friends. And um, we so he sort of took me under his wing and um, I would go to his studio and help him print. He was a master printmaker, like I say, so other artists would send him their plates and he would print them and print the edition. And I was able to help with that process. So just meeting him and the passion that he had, it, it, it also instilled in me this great love of printmaking. Oh, and I miss him dearly, but yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because um, I know this is really about you guys, but um, for me with Clay, my turning point was um, meeting Robin Hopper. He came to Vermont, talk, taught a five day course, stayed at our home, and he and Camille had a connection. It was so he talked me into taking this three week glaze course out in British Columbia in Victoria and he said now everyone else in this class has already arrived and you're a beginner so you need to keep your mouth closed and take in <laughs> as much as you can and um, learn as much as you can so I was on pins and needles and I went out there and I was with these hot shots who you see in books mm -hmm. and they wanted to do something new and so he created a glaze course for every single person in the class based on a questionnaire that you completed. And wow. so we had to show up there with 300 tiles and then we had to create 300 glazes. Oh my God. And then we all used the same formula. So we all have, there were 12 of us in the class. We have, what is that? 360 formulas, no more than that. Add two more zeros that we all can look at and we know exactly how they're made. Wow. And that was a turning point for me. And a lot of ways, I believe that because of having C2C and all these things, I still think, what did he see in me? Why did he become my friend and mentor? And I need to keep pushing, yeah. you know, and I don't know why yet. And he's passed, so I can't ask him. And, you know, so it, it's, it's interesting, the people that come, Ultra, sorry, run into and come across. Yeah. Um, Ultra. Do you have a project 
<laughs> oh my gosh. I told you this happens. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Go away. Um, do you have a project you want to work on? Because we're still in lockdown. We're still supposed to be at home most of the time. Do you have a project you're working on right now that you want to tell us about? Leanne? I, yeah. Um, so the idea had been roaming around in my head about creating a book. I also have taken several classes in um, book binding uh, down in Ann Arbor at Hollanders over the years. And um, so the idea came to me about actually it's called pinning in or tipping in original prints um, into a book on a support paper and hand binding the book. So that's where I'm going. I'm trying to work out sizes for this book. I don't want it to be too big. I want it to be intimate. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm, that's my thing. And um, I don't have a letter press, but I am, I have been invited to ZMA's um, Liz Chalfin, who owns ZMA's invited six artists to work out there um, and she has a letter press um, for the end of July. And um, like you said, working, going out and when you're ceramics class, working with some of the people that are published in books. Well, this class is some of the people that are published. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, I'm invited. So I'm excited. And they do have a letter press and several, I'll be exposed to their work and their inspiration. Um, so this book is sort of, hopefully the class will run and I'll have the courage to travel then. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's this book that I've been working on. So I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. Christy, what project are you working on? Well, I've got that oil painting on my easel yet, <laughs> but, um, actually I was thinking about, um, the next art prize, probably not this year. <laughs> But I really love working um, large. Um, when I did that five foot by seven foot abstract um, painting, and it was really cool. And I love working large, so I'm kind of been spinning around another large abstract, maybe to go for art prize whenever we have another one of those. So um, that's what I would really like to work on. But I have to have a reason to do something that large and. And it takes up so much space that, um, yeah, that, that's the question. That's the problem. But right. uh, other than that, I'll probably work on my typical uh, floral theme, like I said, and uh, keep rolling with the oils. So the painting that's behind you, Christy, mm -hmm. that's a newer one this year, I think, isn't it? That one, not too many people have seen this piece. Um, it is a 40 by 60 oil. And it's inspired by Lake Michigan, and um, I don't think it was in your gallery. In fact, I don't think anybody's had it in that. In the gallery. So um, I think it's on the website. It probably is. I think it is right now. Leanne, what are you? What have you got that you can show us tonight? Um, this one is. Well, these are some of the ones for the book. So this is um, a small, intimate one from a luncheon we had in Helsinki. Um, cool. And this Ireland, I don't know what you see. Love yeah, it. it's beautiful. The legend, Ireland. yeah. Landscape. I love Ireland. I've been there several times and it's just, it, you know, I think once you go to Ireland for most people, it gets into your, it gets into your heart and it just takes your heart. Um, this is one of the latest ones. It's a little bit bigger. It's a 12 by 12. Oh yeah. Nice. Oh, right. I've seen that. You posted Love it that. on Facebook. Yeah. Uh -huh. Some of these I've got to get off to you or to Sarah. Yeah. So these are some of them. The other ones I think you've seen. Oh, yeah. Very nice. That's okay. Nice. That Norris Creek? No, that's Red River from oh, um, okay. Tennessee. Okay. So, what I want everyone to know is that if you go on the website, people have been astounded. We've had really good feedback about how our website is looking now. It's much more um, driven or focused on the specific pieces of artwork for each artist. Um, you can see Christy Dries's paintings, a large selection of them. You can see her, um, reproductions of her prints. 
Um, Leanne Frame, we have several of hers. I actually went back into her website and started asking some questions of pieces that I thought were, would be great for our clients. And so we have some new pieces of Leanne's that are available. And um, you know, if any of you are curious about their work, um, call, email us, text us, do whatever's the easiest way to communicate. We'll reach out to the, um, Leanne or Christy and we'll see what they have. Um, you can always ask them to make a piece specifically for you. And um, you know, we'll go from there. But anyways, I thank you to you two for your time. I appreciate it. And I hope you're well. And I'm loving the outdoors. I'm so glad that it's nice finally. Thank and you. hopefully we can see you guys in person very soon. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. <laughs>